Hi, my name is Arch, and this is my tiny house office. I built it during the pandemic. It was so much fun that I decided to build another tiny house cabin down on a property that my brother and I own in Southern Ohio. I documented the process, so join me along in my journey to build this off-grid tiny house cabin out of reclaimed materials and learn some new things along with me. Welcome to my neck of the woods. I just wanted to let you know where I was heading, which is I'm going over to my grandma and grandpa's, and we're going to start this process of learning how to make maple syrup. So my grandpa is kind of an expert at this. He's been doing it for a number of years. He would definitely not call himself that, but I would. So he knows how the process goes, and uh, he's been doing it down at the property that we have for you know many years, and then he also does it uh, at his place in Xenia. So... Uh, I'm going to go and see uh, what I can learn, and then we're also going to be cutting up some wood to use for the uh, actual uh, boiling down process of making syrup. So if you're interested in seeing how syrup is made, I think this will be a cool episode for you. I guess I want to talk a little bit about, too, the fact that one of the things I guess I hope that this channel can be about is about the woods itself that um, are part of the property, and I am just you know, always excited to find new things that I can do with uh, the property. So maybe making maple syrup is one of those things and I'm excited to be able to share that with you. And um, you know, who knows, maybe if you got a little property with some maple trees on it, you can try it yourself and see what you can come up with. So uh, let's see how this goes. Alright, so as you can see, my grandpa's already got a tree tapped, and he's got both kinds of buckets that we could use, both the traditional bucket and this uh, plastic jug. So what I wanted to do first was just have him explain the process a little bit and what we're going to be doing. Boiling sap and reducing it down to maple syrup. The first step is to find a maple tree. The ideal is sugar maple, but I have found over the years that any kind of maple will work. Sugar content in sugar maple is a little higher. So once you find the maple tree, which this is a big old maple tree, so this actually is a soft maple, but it works. You drill a 7 16 hole in the tree then you drive this unit in. You call it a spile. I believe I'm saying that right. Uh, you drive that into it, and you can see there's some moisture there. Once you get it in there, the traditional way is a bucket. These buckets have been around for years. And hang that on there. Put a lid on it to keep the leaves and stuff out. It doesn't keep ants out though in warm weather. You will find ants in there in the winter, but you, you filter them out and cook them and sterilize it or pasteurize it and everything's okay. If you don't have the buckets, uh, another option is a, a cheap way, and that's take used milk jug or water jug. A little different kind of attachment here. Drive that in, it's the same concept. The sap runs out of here into the jug and of course you catch it. Uh, nice thing about this is this holds two gallons. Obviously that only holds one gallon. That works fine. Nothing wrong with it. The end result is the same. It's rather homemade but it works. And then as these fill up or whenever you decide you want to do it, you may not wait till they fill up but whenever you decide to collect it and you go around and with some container such as a barrel, put that on a vehicle such as a gator, haul it in, and then we go to the fire. This sap is only, in fact, if you taste that, it doesn't even taste sweet. When you boil this, you boil away 39 parts, which are water, and end up with a 
syrup of a consistency that's good for pancakes and what have you. If you're going to make a gallon, it takes 40 gallons of sap. Now that will vary from year to year and tree to tree. But 40 is the industry average making maple syrup. So why don't we go down to where we do the boiling and uh, show you what we do there. So for purposes of showing what we do here, we've got this uh, pan. In the industry, it's called an evaporator, and it's appropriately named because you basically evaporate the water out of that. Uh, if we were doing uh, from a collection, we'd have a barrel here of, of sap, and what we would do is put it into the pan. It holds about six gallons, maybe seven gallons. Build a fire in here, and that'll get to a real hard boil. And after you boil all day long, it'll go down and down and down. At that point, that's not finished syrup. When it gets down to where you're done boiling and you're you're down to where you're ready to do the, the finish cooking, you, you, you drain it off of here with this into a container. What I have done is take it in the house. You finish it on the stove. So you take it in the house, you put it in a prepared barrel pan, you take a digital thermometer, is how I do it, and you boil till it gets down to uh, 220 degrees, and then you have syrup. And I might tell you, you don't just fill this up and cook it down. You just keep all day long as it goes down, adding sap to it. It isn't like you cook a batch, take it off, cook a batch, take it off. It's the same batch that you keep cooking all day long until you're done. And that's basically the process. So with that basic understanding of how to go about making maple syrup, we started on what our first step was, which was getting some of this wood chopped up so that we could make it burn a little bit hotter. By the way, for those of you who don't know, the property that we have is located down in Ripley, Ohio and my grandma and grandpa were actually the previous owners of the property. If you're ever interested in visiting, there's an Airbnb link down in the description below, and there's actually a pretty nice cabin down there where you can stay, and you don't have to stay in the tiny house the whole time.
So I realize this video is a bit disjointed when it comes to the timeline. But basically what I did was I went to my grandpa's, then I went down to the river, tapped a few trees, and then he came down to help me find the rest of them because I don't know where they're all located. I'm also not that great at identifying trees, so I was grateful to have him down there. And what we did was we went up to the first trees that I tapped the other day, to take a look and see how they were coming along. You have sap. Yeah. Well, that's probably. Oh wow. Needs to be driven a little bit more. See how it's running yeah, down there. I see. Wow, that's a lot. Oh wow, this is really cool. Okay, so this is what we got. Um, this is what we got so far, and you can see it's quite a bit. That's just from less than a day. Let's see if we got any in here. Oh yeah, look at all that. So all in all, these three trees produced about three gallons of sap so what I'm gonna do is put that in the freezer and I'm gonna save it for later That's it for this episode of My Neck of the Woods. And I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe learned a thing or two. I know I did. And um, I really want to thank my grandpa for uh, just showing me how this process works and uh, sharing his equipment with me and walking me through how to find the trees and everything. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing this uh, uh, every year and I uh, really just enjoy doing it. The uh, the next thing I need to do though is uh, obviously get the sap boiled down and that's going to have to be another episode. Really we're honestly out here too early. Uh, we've just had kind of a mild uh, January uh, in some of the days at least and uh, sap tends to run when you have really cold nights and then warmer days and so if it gets down into the uh, the low 20s but then up into the 40s in the day then uh, that's usually a good time uh, from what I understand and so uh, the plan is hopefully to uh, come back in a couple weeks and actually harvest a lot more sap and boil it down so I'm planning on doing that as another episode so I hope you'll stay tuned but I wanted to get this one out so that if you want to do this yourself then maybe you'll uh, you'll have a, a little bit more of an understanding of how to go about it so um, thanks for watching if you like this video, please like, subscribe. I always appreciate comments. Let me know what you think. And also uh, maybe tell a friend about it or something. So um, thanks for watching. And that's what's happening from my neck of the woods. Here's your moment of zen.